everyone. This evening I'm going to share with you a couple secrets. So today I was at the gym and I overheard a couple guys talking and one guy said to the other, what do you think is the secret to the fountain of life? And I don't know what the other guy answered, but in my mind I was thinking, well, I know the answer to the secret of eternal life. So the secret to eternal life is John 3:16, where it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So to me, that is the secret to eternal life. And then I think about um, the fountain of youth and the fountain of life. And I think about Jesus has many different names and one of his names is the living water. So I like this verse here where it talks about where Jesus says, On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. So... Jesus is our living water, and he is our eternal life. So to me, there's no better fountain of life than Jesus Christ. So if you want to know more about Jesus, you can ask me, and I'll give you some more answers and help to point you in the right direction. But this um, scripture that I just read was John 7, 37 through 39. So that's the secret of the fountain of youth. But now I'm going to share with you the secret to better movement. So this um, movement I see not happening a lot. And if this movement happened more often, there would be less injuries and less body pain. So everybody, no matter how young or old you are, should be doing the hinge. So the hinge is... Um, a motion that we do with our hips anytime we want to bend over for something. So what we don't want to do is a bend over like this, and that's how we need to bend over if we don't hinge first. So hinging is an important thing. I, I teach my clients to find their hip bones and place your hands on your hip bones and press into your heels and press your butt back to um, uh, the wall behind you. So in order to get them to understand that, I'll have them stand in front of a wall. So here, pretend this is my wall. You take a little step forward, and then you take your hips and have your butt try to touch the wall. So there you are. When your butt touches the wall, then you're in a good hinge. So you hinge from here. So when you hinge though, you don't want to hinge and bend over. You want to keep your chest up, looking with your eyes gazing kind of upward when you hinge so that your back is straight. You have a, a straight back here. So this is a movement we use in real life all the time. Say we're loading the dishwasher or we're getting something from a lower cabinet. The way that you should not do it, especially if you have osteoporosis, is to get into the dishwasher like this. Because as we're getting older, as we're getting osteoporosis, we're already having a rounding of our spine going on. And doing this is just going to cause that to be even worse. And worse than that, sometimes if you're in the middle of a rounded spine like this and you happen to sneeze or do anything that gives you a jolting motion, if you have osteoporosis, your spine is already so weak that just a sneeze when you're in this motion can cause you to fracture um, some of your spine. So what you want to always do, no matter how old you are, no matter how fit you are, is hinge. So say you're loading the dishwasher, you don't want to be doing this. You want to push your hips back. And the more you do this, the more you don't need to think about it anymore. You'll just start going into the dishwasher, like here. Say you have to get to a lower cabinet. Then in the lower cabinet, you're going to hinge first and then bend down. Because if you don't hinge first, 
If you bend down without the hinge, you're going to do that rounding and that's where the back pain happens. If you're working in the garden, a lot of times you're told to squat in the garden to work on the garden so you're not bending over, but that could be taxing on your knees if you're in there for an hour or so. So the best thing to do when you're working in the garden is to hinge and then you can do your things like that. So a lot of times people might not be able to hinge because they might have tight hamstrings. So to take care of that tight hamstring, um, you can foam roll. Now if you have osteoporosis or rheumatoid arthritis or blood clot disorder, advanced diabetes, um, certain things if you're not sure if you're on that list, I would say ask your doctor. But um, there's some people, if you have varicose veins, um, foam rolling isn't the best option for you. So you would want to just do some static stretching for your hamstrings or you can take your hamstrings and rub them out like this. Give yourself a self massage rather than the pressure that you're going to get on your foam roller. But if um, you're otherwise healthy and don't have any of those issues, you can foam roll your hamstring which would start from right behind uh, above the back of your knee you never want to foam roll on the backs of your knees so you're going to go from right above the backs of your knee up to your your sit bones so you'll take that and roll through i say you start with an assessment of the muscle and that's when the rolling back and forth will happen but once you find a spot that feels like oh there's a tense spot i could work that out then you can cross one leg over the other if you want to apply more pressure. And then you're just going to stay on that spot for uh, 30 seconds up to 60 seconds. So if you're finding that you need more pressure and you're doing one side at a time, then stay 30 seconds on one side and then switch to 30 seconds on the other side. So um, that will help alleviate some of that tightness in your hamstring. And then once you're done doing that, there's different options you have for stretching your hamstrings. You can stretch your hamstring on the ground like this, pulling back. You can also get a resistance band or a towel and pull that down towards you more. I like this option, especially for people with osteoporosis who are not supposed to be rounding their spine. What I don't like and what therapists and exercise of today will teach you is that this is not good anymore you shouldn't do this because you're rounding your spine so if you're going to do any kind of seated hamstring thing it would be you would have to keep your back straight and you don't get much of a hamstring stretch doing this so the better option is to lay on your back and pull your leg down right here another option would be the standing hamstring because this way you can dig your heel into the ground and your toe up and then just take your chest forward keeping your back straight and then that's way more of a hamstring stretch than that one sit seated um, rolled over one so that's a good option as long as you're not doing this so i see this all the time but that this does not even stretch your hamstring i don't know what it does this as soon as you do this you will start to feel here and look i'm doing the hinge so that hinge is always important and another really good hamstring stretch that i really like the most i learned this one from athlean x where i learned a lot of my things but your toe goes up on the wall like you were going to do a calf stretch and then your hands I don't want to put my hands on my mirror. That could cause a lot of people to have um, anxiety. Fingers on the mirror. So I'm going to scoot here. So you can be on the wall and your hands go up. Now the leg that is stretching is the one that has your toe up on the wall. And you're just going to lean into the wall and then you're going to feel the stretch all the way down your hamstring. So that is a really good hamstring stretch and then you would switch and then holding holding that stretch for 30 seconds at a time on each of those so 
Hey Abigail, nice to see you watching. <laughs> you, Abigail has such good posture, so I'm sure that she does very nice hinge when she does her workouts. But um, Abigail has some of the best posture I've ever seen. But um, so here we are back to the hinge. So once you've had your hamstring stretched out, you'll find that you'll be able to hinge. Hopefully you'll be able to hinge a little bit better. So like I was saying, the hinge is to push your hips back. Now, this hinge is important for so many different movements that we do in life. And you'll start to realize how many things we do with the hinge or things we should be doing with the hinge that we're not doing with the hinge and that's why we're not doing things right. So, um, when I first started learning squats, I never could do it right because I was always told, just put your butt back sit back and put your butt back. Okay, so if you're if you're being told to put your butt back and you've never really squatted before, here's what happens when you put your butt back. Okay, so I'm putting my butt back, but my knees are up here. My back is totally arched cuz I'm putting my butt back and this is not a very good looking squat. So um, it's so important at whatever age you are. I have clients that are in their 80s and they squat and they need to squat. There's never a time in life where you're going to stop squatting unless there's a time in life you're going to stop going to the bathroom because you got to squat to get on the toilet. There's never going to be a time where you shouldn't lunge or do steps unless you're never going to walk steps again. So there's no such thing as I'm too old to do this. That's just not in our world anymore. You're never too old to do anything. You just have to keep doing it so that you can keep doing it. So squat, for instance. But so many people don't know how to squat. So so many people will squat like this and then their knees will come forward and their heels will come up. And do you see any hinge here? No, there's no hinge. So as soon as I hinge, I can't do that messed up squat anymore. So I've never heard anybody tell me, hey Kathy, hinge before you squat. I've heard them say, stick your butt out. All right, well here I'm sticking my butt out, but that's not doing me any good because now here my butt's sticking out, but this is a dumb squat. So this is what I've been teaching all my people is I get them from, at, I'll tell them to get against the wall, step forward, and then I'll have them hinge their butt to the wall, and then slide down and come up. So that's what a squat is. So first there's the hinge. Well, first there's a little bit of a bend in your knee. Then there's the hinge. Then there's the squat. If you can't hinge, you can't squat. And so that's why so many people have messed up squats. So if I try to hit a squat without a hinge and I'm like this, which most people do, I see people at the gym with loaded weights on their back and their heels are coming up and their knees are forward and sometimes their backs are rounded like this. So if you have a rounded back in your squat, that means you did not hinge first. So. You hinge, and then you come down into your squat. So, and then any way that you're gonna hold your hands on your squat, which you should be able to hold your hands up close to your ears in a squat. I used to not be able to do that. I used to fall back. Um, I used to just have a completely messed up squat until I figured out hinge comes first squat comes second. So then other things you want to do in life, pick something up off the floor. So here I'm going to hinge to pick up this kettlebell so that I can put it where I want it to be. So if you're going to pick up something from the floor, you want to get as close to it as you can. And so then you're going to want to hinge and then go down to pick it up and that way you are using these muscles back here your big 
um, hamstrings and your glute maximus to be and pressing through your heels to come up rather than bending over like this. If I were to bend over like this and pick this up, strain right here and right here. And um, that would be messed up back after that. So you can pick up heavy things if you just pick things up correctly. So, and it's with that hinge, hinging and bending down. So if you want to do a proper squat, if you want to do a proper lift, if you want to do a row, so a row is also gonna be with the hinge and then you'll row. So you have to stabilize yourself with your glutes in your hinge. So when you're hinging, you're using your, you're using your glute muscles, which is a lot of times we avoid using our glute muscles when we're doing this kind of squat. Um, so we're not stabilizing anything in our core, but as soon as we do our hinge, we're using these muscles and you're working your core. So that way when you go to pick up the heavier item, you're stabilized with the muscles that you should be stabilized with. And now you're going to avoid injury. So same thing with the kettlebell swing. So if you're able to do a hinge, you're able to do a kettlebell swing because a swing is a hinge and then a thrust, a hinge and a thrust, a hinge and a thrust. I see people bending over to take their kettlebell like that and then hinge it. And then that's just causing strain on their back. So you have to hinge first. Another thing is that a, a kettlebell swing isn't a squat and a press up a squat and up. It's a hinge and a thrust, a hinge and a thrust. So you're hinging and you're thrusting your hips forward to do that kettlebell swing. So if you can't hinge, you cannot do a kettlebell swing. But if you can hinge, if you can hinge, then you can do rows, then you can squat, you can do swings, and then you can ultimately get to the point where you can do heavier lifts, like a deadlift. So here, this is a um, bigger weight here, but same thing. I'm going to get really close to the bar. I'm going to bend my knees a little bit, hinge, and then I'm also going to take my arms out to make sure that I'm stable. I'm going to take my arms down here and then make sure I'm stable and then come up with that thrust and then hinging back to put it down. So that's the hinge. That's the secret to movement that should not be a secret. It should be something everybody does and everybody continues to do for mostly, most of the things we do in life. So just remember, take your hip bones, press them back, come up and squeeze your booty, hip bones back and squeeze. There is no such thing as a squat without a hinge. So you hinge, squat, and up, hinge, and then eventually you won't even think about it. When you go to squat, you will just automatically hinge, like here. But in order to get that right, you have to think about hinging back first and think about thinking about that You've got a dirty, nasty toilet back there and you don't want to sit on it. And you're in a gas station or something and you're like, oof, yick. And you're trying to get away from there. And that is what you need to do for a uh, squat. So when you're, when you're really trying to get away from that toilet, you're making sure you're getting that hinge going on. So, and that's here like this. So just make sure you're doing that hinge. And that is going to help out hopefully with your movement patterns with um, everything you do. Think about whenever you get into the cabinet, uh, cabinet like here, hinging first, not rounding. Cause even when I round a little bit just to show it to you, um, that hurts. <laughs> 
that'll hurt right there. So you want to hinge and then get down to whatever lower area is that you're getting to. So I see my Aunt Cindy is watching. Hey, how you doing? And Sasha, hey. <laughs> so if you thought that this was interesting and you missed it, you can just go back and watch it again because the hinge is an important move. So um, tomorrow I'm going to be, I have so many clients and um, people at the gym with messed up feet and ankles. So tomorrow I'm going to be showing um, some corrective exercises for feet and ankles. So hopefully you'll be able to join me in the morning and um, everybody's working tomorrow but me. So I'll be home in a quiet house able to do videos. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.